All right, guys, welcome. Uh, just talking about pulling out a little bolt here. It's a M8 by 125. I checked the thread earlier. Uh, I don't know how it was broken. So that's one thing that really helps is knowing if it got broken on the way in, the way out, got cross-threaded, uh, if it got snapped by shearing off, those sort of things can kind of give you an indication. Uh, one of the great things, nah, strike that. One of the first things I like to try is just some uh, some good uh, oil, penetrating oil, and a pair of pliers. So I've had it sitting here seeping for a minute. We're going to get, doo -doo -doo -doo. we'll put a clamp on here just so it doesn't get away from us. And that's kind of with anything that you do. It's handy to, to get something on here. Once we get this out, we've got another, I don't know if y'all can see that. That thread's a little questionable, so we'll we'll take a look at that to, to either repair the thread or if required, we'll put some helicoil in there, which is, if you're not familiar with helicoil, helicoil is a thread repair so it's essentially taps to a it's called a spi thread it's like a special insert thread don't quote me on that so we got that down let's grab us a pair of pliers come over here to our pliers bin more open drawers than we know what to do with just a good pair of locking pliers. We'll get a my good pair of slip joints there. Snap on, snappy on. And I, there's not very much sticking up here, so I don't believe that this is this is gonna work. But as with any project, keep it simple. Yeah. Get a little tighter there. Yeah. Oh, that's got absolutely nothing. Yeah, she she ain't coming out like that. I didn't expect so, but I wanted to to make sure I tried. So we'll. We, looks like we just got an end mill in here right now. So we'll swap that out. So just a drill chuck we'll find out what size of uh pilot drill we would typically have and we'll come in under that which oh i'm guessing it's pretty close to a quarter inch maybe 230 if i was to to make an educated guess on it If you don't have one of these charts, they're uh, they're exceedingly handy. So standard and metric decimal equivalents on one side and tap drills on the other, standard and metric. So M8 by 125, 2638. So just a little over quarter inch. So I'm gonna start with just putting probably a quarter inch rod in here. And I'm gonna use that to line up with. You don't have to be ultra precise, but you want to be pretty close. That looks pretty good. We'll zero out our DRO so when we we lose track, we'll know where to go. And we'll grab us a, a center drill here. Eh, we'll do a spot drill. Start with the spot drill. doing right now is getting that top surface where where we can actually work with it if you these jagged surfaces if you go straight to the drill you want to use the probability it's going to give you issues is pretty high so if you watch that drill see how she walks 
I'm doing just kind of light pressure, a little bit, yeah. If you saw how she kind of evened up there, and then a couple of chips, there. Oh yeah. So now that got us a, a good little spot to get started with. And I didn't go too deep. I didn't chew off that whole top surface. So my, my go-to extractors, and some guys might give me a hard time about this. <laughs> and we're back. Oh goodness. Crack myself up sometimes. So my go-to extractors are actually these grab it speed outs and you'll find them at like Lowe's, Home Depot, maybe even Menards. They're not very expensive and they work. They work a lot of the time. The It's kind of one of those things. I start slow. They've got essentially a, a left-hand drill point on one side and the extractor on the other. So you don't have to guess on drill point sizes for a given extractor. You typically want to start on the smaller side. And uh, so smaller side extractor so you can step up if you need to and left-handed. So uh, make sure you're spinning in the right direction. That's my WD-40 bottle. And I've had a lot of these that would spin out just from that little left-handed drill there. Well, there went my crawl oil. Glad to see that this bolt's not too, too hard. That always adds a level of nonsense to things. And the other side, kind of one of two things will happen. Either it'll just spin right on out or it'll just strip out the bolt. The, I, I've broke them before, but it doesn't happen very often. Try not to get too aggressive with the, the speed. You don't need any fluid in there. Uh-oh. So what happened there was it grabbed enough that it actually uh, loosened my drill chuck. So because the drill chuck is on a thread, essentially if you spin it backwards, it will loosen itself up. So this is technically a keyless chuck. You don't have the same problems on key chucks, but this one, if you see these holes in here, you can grab it with the spanner, hit the brake, and give it that extra little ugga. All right, make sure we're turning in the right direction. And, yep, just did it again. All right, well, in that case, let me swap over to a keyed chuck and we'll try it again. Give me just a minute. Okay, so we've got a key chuck in there which shouldn't let it spin backwards now. We're gonna go ahead and give it one more try. So make sure you're spinning in reverse. And it just drilled it out. Okay, so not overly surprised on that, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to go to a little more extreme measures. We're gonna go ahead and go back to my keyless chuck because that's the one I, I greatly prefer. And then we're gonna drill it out the hard way. This is one of those things that it's a little more complicated, but that's okay. All the drill chucks. There it is. Uh, we don't want to quite go to that quarter inch. I think what we'll probably do is 
come in about 220. Missing a drill bit. What I'm looking for on that first little bit is making sure that I didn't break through the threads in any direction. It looks like we're good on that. It's not perfectly centered, but we're okay. Well, that's not supposed to do that. So breaking through, you wanna be nice and easy Every once in a while, it'll grab. Especially with keyless chucks, you don't have near the grippage that you would with a, a collet or a, a key chuck. Oh, we're just kind of double checking that drill bit, making sure we don't have any chips out of the edge, anything we need to worry about. Okay. So a good sign there. Uh, as I was breaking through, I actually saw it twisting a little bit, which gives me hope. So we're actually going to come in. We're gonna try our extractor again. Uh, that one's a little big. And I just have a, a handful of different extractors. It's kind of one of those things, different applications call for different extractors. And if you do it very much at all, it's nice to have uh, bit of an assortment oh yeah Ooh, and then it gets tight so something in there she's starting to come and I'm just working it a little bit at a time almost like I've got a tap in there and we're actually going to go to more of a T style. Get up over this bolt. Well, there we go. Sometimes drilling that center hole releases just enough pressure that she'll she'll come right out. All right, and there you can see it. Yeah, it looks like it, it had gotten jammed up on those last couple of threads, like they'd ran a bolt a little too long into there. All right, boys. Judging by that, looks like the I'm looking like the threads are okay I'm gonna run a tap back through them just to verify be good or be good at it we'll see you next time